listening was what we defended, you know, for, for the entire thing. And uh, we fouled them too much. And that was the one negative, but overall, I put the effort to stay with it and keep the system. It appeared as though Russell Westbrook had a fire in his eyes from the start and certainly exerted leadership in terms of the force he brought to both ends of the building throughout. How important is that to your team down the stretch? I mean, he's done a great job leading. Um, you know, I think for every team, you know, when you're playing 82 games, it's going to be like a lot of different things to deal with. We had to deal with him being out of training camp, missing the first four games. You know, then we had to deal with uh, you know, him going down with an ankle sprain, and then Paul George being out the last three games. Uh, then the shooter out having a big, and every team goes through it, so I'm not saying we're any different. But I think the one thing about him is he's always tried to find ways to lead to help the group, you know, as best he can. You know, based on the circumstances, who's available, who's out there. As much as it was a significant win, complete the season series sweep with Portland and go up a full game for that number three position against them, now you're confronted with a Clipper team that seems playoff bound at 37 and 29, rested, having not played since Monday. Your guys were taxed in a big way last night. How do you deal with this challenge that way? Yeah, I mean, it's just part of the NBA. You're going to be in back to back situations. You know, for us, it was an overtime game, and, you know, we got in late. Um, quick turnaround. They're a different team than the one we saw last, you know, after the trade deadline. They're playing very good basketball. They're uh, you know, a, a together team that plays together, um, physical, tough. Um, you know, they've obviously, in the trade deadline, added some, some good pieces to their team. So, um, you know, again, we'll have to utilize our entire team. You know, everybody becomes a factor. Everybody's important. Um, it's a long game, and we'll need everybody to play. Among the mainstays, the guys that held over through the trade deadline, three have given you problems this season. In the starting lineup, you know Bellinari. How do you neutralize him tonight? Then off the bench, the reason of the top scoring bench in the league is Montrez Harrell and Lou Williams. Yeah, those guys have played very well. Bellinari is a unique player because of his versatility to post and face up, put it on the floor, and generate offense for himself for screening action. So he's a hard cover for anybody. And then I think to your point, Lou Williams and Montrez Harrell, both guys at the bench have played very well. You know, they get to the free throw line more than any team in the league, so we got to do a great job at being able to defend, and they also rebound the ball, and uh, we'll have to get on the glass and, and, and rebound uh, with them. Um, but, you know, again, I think their second unit when they've suffered has been very, very uh, really big for their team. How do you generate energy early in this game? Because it starts to games have not been great lately until last night when you won the first quarter in Portland. Well, I think our guys um, have done a good job. I think Russell's leadership. I mean, our guys understand that you know, coming in here tonight, we're playing against a good team. You know, coming off the fact that you know, we uh, obviously had a, a long day yesterday. Uh, these guys are pros. They understand this is not the first time they've played back to back, so they've locked a lot of minutes have been in. So had a similar situation. You know, against Utah coming out of the break and then playing against Sacramento right after a double overtime game. Um, you know, there, there'll, there'll be things that we'll have to deal with in the game. And, uh, but I think our guys have got that kind of perseverance that they're going to put their best foot forward and give the best effort that they can. Is there any such thing at this point in the season about learning any lessons off of that back-to-back? -back? You referenced Utah, double overtime win, next night facing Sacramento, falling a bit short by three against them. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you're going to have to play well every night. Um, you know, I think when the ball gets thrown up, I don't think any of these guys are focused on what happened yesterday or the number of minutes they played yesterday or uh, that they're focused on what's in front of them at that point in time. So, you know, I get the lead up to the game people looking at that, but we'll have to see how the game is going, um, you know, as it relates to foul trouble, fatigue, those kind of things. But I think overall our guys will come out and, like they always do, I think they try to give, give, give it as good of an effort as they can. As a final question, uh, lay out some keys for us for success for your team tonight. Well, I think we talked about some of them. You know, we certainly have got to take care of the ball. Uh, we got off to a poor start in Portland in the first half. We turned it over 11 times. I think the other part of it is we've got to be able to defend without fouling. You know, they're a team that's aggressive going to the basket, and they generate a lot of a lot of fouls, um, so that's going to be really important for us. And I think the other thing too is we got to rebound. You know, when our first shot defense is good and we can get out on the break, you know, that's when we're at our best is playing out in transition. Good luck in here tonight, Coach. Thank you, man. It's Billy Donovan and Thunder and the Clippers coming up. They put the wraps on their four-game season series. The starting lineups next. This is Thunder Basketball. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Coach. Everybody. Hey, Coach. Hey, Coach. What what is a what stat is indicative of an OKC Thunder coach team? I'm sorry? What, what stat is indicative of an Oklahoma Thunder team? What stat would it be indicative? Um, you know, hopefully our defense. You know, that's one of the things I think we've talked about from the beginning. You know, training camp is being a really good defensive team because I think we have the talent and the ability to do that. You know, I thought probably through the first 40 or 50 games we were really good. We've had some slippage, you know, coming out of the break. But uh, last night we were, I think, back to more of, of the identity we want to play with. Thank you. I think coaches always stop for their guys, but when it comes to MVP races, they're usually tears. But that's 
Paul put himself in that to be top tier. I don't think there's any question. You know, I'm, I have said this before. I'm not. You know, I don't get a chance to see everybody play on a nightly basis. Like I get a chance to see Paul, but I'd be hard pressed to find. You know, a lot of guys that are playing the level he's played at for the entire year. You know, who those names are, what those guys, you know, have, have done, what the comparisons are like. It's really hard for me. But I think when you look at a player that does it on both ends the way he does, certainly I think he should be mentioned and talked about in that category of the top tier guys. Um, how much is adding the step back for him? Kind of a Level step back jump shot, you mean? Step back three specifically. Um, he's always really good with the, the ball. I think the one thing for Paul is he gets in better rhythm when he's putting the ball on the floor. That's what I think how he likes to play. So I think when he can, you know, get to spots and create space um, because of his size and his length, that helps him. Um, I think he's a guy that's always tried to work on his game and get better at certain things. He's obviously, you know, I think coming off the shoulder injury, um, maybe he hasn't shot the ball at the level of the rate he had been for most of the season, but. I'm not really worried about that. He'll get that going, but you know, as long as he's great and generating good shots for himself, to your point, I'll throw some of the things he's been able to work on. You feel good about him taking those shots. I feel like with Paul, we've focused so much on his offensive improvements from last year, but Doc was saying that he thinks that defensively he's better this year too. Do you agree with that? Um, I think he's better all the way around, and I think that's not. I think a lot of this got to do with, like I said so many times, I think when you're coming into a new situation, he was in Indiana for seven years, new coaching staff, new teammates, new front office, new medical staff, new everything. And then you're going into a contract year uh, at the end of the season, there's a lot on his plate. And then he's trying to feel his way and trying to figure out how he can fit in, how he can help the group. One thing about Paul is he's a total team guy. He's really unselfish. Um, and he's one of those guys that can look at situations and try to figure out how he can inject himself in a positive way. So, you know, he's always been an elite defender. Um, I think that's why, you know, when people talk about all the MVP stuff, he's got to be up there because there's not too many guys that do it at the level he does that on both ends of the floor. I mean, he's elite on both ends of the floor. And people talk about, you know, the MVP race and all that stuff, but people also talk about him as the defense player of the year. You know, and I'm not so sure that there's a lot of other candidates that are going to be able to be mentioned as defensive player of the year candidates. So I'm not saying that he should or shouldn't be. I'm just saying he has to be in that discussion based on what he's done. And I think it's because even what Doc said, you know, his ability to play both ends. Coach, talk about as far as the way you guys are gelling. How excited is that for you? And what concerns you the most about going down towards the final push? Well, you know, I think it's really, really hard when you're, you've got 82 games and the amount of time that these guys spend with each other not to have good chemistry and guys understand the importance of the chemistry and I, I think our older guys like Russell and Paul George, you know, Stephen Adams has been here, Raymond Felton, veteran guys, they understand I think being in a lot of NBA locker rooms the importance of dealing with adversity during the course of the year. It's not smooth all the time, there's difficulties, there are challenges. But when you stay together in adversity, you realize more than ever that more than ever you need each other in those situations. So the one thing that's been most encouraging to me, you know, really since the season started, is these guys have built a good relationship and a good bond. And I feel like our chemistry is very good. So I think that's important going forward. And then I think we got to continually look for ways the last 17, 18 games of the year to continue to improve, get better, and be playing our best basketball at the end of the year. Well, you guys will run hot and cold over the course of the season, but with Russell's shooting, do you see anything different either in terms of the shots he's getting or his comfort or his mechanics or anything lately? No, not really. I mean, he's obviously shot the ball, you know, pretty well. Um, you know, I think he's, he's taking good shots. He's getting good looks. Um, you know, he's really, things to me for him really uh, open up in a lot of different ways when he's making that mid-range jump shot because he's coming at you so fast that when teams are backing up to protect the paint, he makes that shot. He's done that. But I've always said, like, I'm never really worried about Russell's offense just because there's so many other things that he does to put his fingerprints on a game and impact winning. And if he's not shooting the ball particularly well, he can do it through defense, he can do it through rebounding, he can do it through assists. Like last night, I thought the job that he did on Lillard, even though Lillard got 51 last night, certainly in the fourth quarter and in overtime, the way he defended him. You know, that's, I mean, those, you probably can't have stats for that. I mean, Lillard did get to the free throw line, you know, 20 times in the game, but what he did coming down the stretch defensively on him was really impressive that late in the game. Coach, obviously, you guys played in three times way before the trade deadline. They made a bunch of moves, three starters out of the trade Where have they improved since the last time you guys saw them? Well, they look like a team to me. I think I mentioned it about our team. They look like a team that's got good chemistry. They play together, um, they play for each other. Um, they're a tough team, they're a physical team. Um, they play with really good energy, they play with a really good motor. I think they have those kind of guys personality-wise you know, on their team. 
Uh, but I felt they were playing that way even before the trade deadline. You know, a lot of things they were a little bit of a surprise when the season started. I saw them playing in the preseason, and I thought they were going to be a really, really good team. And there's, you, know, you can't put a, a, uh, a measuring stick on guys playing together in that kind of chemistry. It's a group that really enjoys playing with each other. In a league that's super-star driven, you know, especially against the playoffs, they haven't really had one go-to guy as a star. Like, are you surprised to see where they are, how long they've been able to be consistent? Is there anything coming out yeah, I mean, I, th I think obviously having good players is always important. You know, I'm not going to take say that that's not. But I do think that sometimes, you know, up here in, in this league, they people devalue the importance of being a team and being a really good team. And when you're a really good team, sometimes you can maybe upset that. Now maybe you, know, you have to have those kind of guys you're talking about to win it all. But you know, over 82 games, sometimes night in and night out, it's about being a, a great team collectively as a group. And I think sometimes that gets really, really devalued uh, because the chemistry inside of the guys playing for one another and how they all complement each other. You know, you're, you're, I think every coach is trying to find ways to create that kind of formula. Does having guys like Paul George, Jeremy Grant, Stephen Adams, as well, offer you some sort of um, you can change, interchange the players pretty evenly and basically go up against any matchup. How's that work for you? Yeah, I don't know if we can necessarily change them. I mean, they're pretty set in the positions they play, but they do have the flexibility defensively to do a lot of different things. Yeah, word that I was searching yeah, they, 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 they're flexible defensively to do a lot of different things. Like Nerlens can guard a lot of different people. Jeremy the same way. You know, Stephen Adams is a for his size and his length. And, you know, he really moves well for a big guy. So I think that their athleticism, their length, their speed, their quickness, you know, gives them, uh, uh, gives us, I think, as a staff, coaching-wise, and our team, different different ways to utilize them because they can guard multiple positions. When, when people look at numbers and they say, oh, Jokic had this many points, or Towns had this many points, what maybe do they not see about what Steven is doing in some other areas defensively? Well, I mean, there's a lot on his plate, you know, from the standpoint of, you know, he's got to play post-defense. He's got to be in position to block out and rebound. He's got to be in pick-and-roll coverage. And I think with the way the NBA has gone, a lot of teams now are utilizing their five men as facilitators and almost point guards. So you're dealing with five men now that shoot threes, you're dealing with five men that put the ball on the floor, and you're dealing with five men that can really, really pass. And in a lot of ways, the offense is going through those guys. So, you know, I think point guard and the center kind of are at the point, you know, of your defense and how good your defense can be. So he does a lot of different things to protect, save points. Um, does a lot of different things to keep the ball out of the paint. Uh, does a lot of good things to kind of clog the lane up for us. So I mean, he he does a lot of things that are probably very very difficult to find stats to, you know, back that up so to speak. But when you're watching film, you see the impact he makes. Hey, Coach, you Westbrook's you stat, closer, or West could you keep a closer eye on the Patrick Beverly, Russell Westbrook, knowing their history? Do you keep a closer eye on that at all? Hey, Coach, Westbrook's stats, passing stats have increased over the last few years. Would you attribute that to the emergence of Stephen Adams, Paul George, or the coaching of Billy Donovan? <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think that um, – the one thing I'd say about Russell, just being with him now for four years, is he's always looking at the team and figuring out how he can help the team. You know, he, And I've said this before many times about him, a lot of people don't get a chance to see him away from the court, don't get a chance to see him in practice, don't get a chance to see him in the locker room, don't get a chance to see him in film sessions. He is always trying to figure out ways to help the group. You know, So I think he's always looking for that. You know, The year he was the MVP, you know, we needed him to you know, be this force because we had a lot of young guys that needed some confidence. I mean, we were starting Domas Sabonis at the power forward spot as a rookie. Victor, obviously, was, was, was younger and his career could be traded. So I felt like his leadership helped those guys. And then, you know, last year, trying to incorporate Carmelo and Paul. He's always trying to figure out ways to help the team. So, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, and, and I admire that about him, you know. So uh, he's always been a good passer. He's always been a willing passer. Um, and he's always been able to find ways to kind of put his fingerprints all over a game because of the different things he can do athletically. Have you seen his leadership grown since the time you've been with him as well? I've always felt like he's had great leadership. I think the challenge for him has been, uh, you know, when I first got here, obviously the team had been together for a while, so there was kind of built-in relationships there. After that first year, our team has changed quite a bit over the last two or three years. So I see him working on different things to try to 
foster and facilitate those relationships and to lead. But he's always had, since I've been here, great leadership qualities. He's just, he has that. Fantastic coach. Thanks, coach. Thank you, coach.